Hi, this is Henning from Flip Normals. In this video, we are going to be covering XGen and the general workflow included in that. We'll talk about how to get started with uh, descriptions, collections. We'll cover how to actually groom the different splines. We'll cover modifiers. And we'll also cover how to render the groom in Arnold as well. Now, before we get into the tutorial, we have a 12 hour introduction to Maya series, which you might be interested in. We cover everything from um, the general workflow to modeling, deformers, rigging, retopo, UVs, bunch of Arnold things like lighting and shading. And we also have a section as well, which we cover where we cover how to do this entire project start to finish from the first polygon to the last render, including the groom, which we do in XGen in it. So if you're interested in learning Maya, we highly recommend this tutorial for you. Introduction to Maya, link in the description. Before we really get into XGen, there is one thing we really have to talk about, and that is that XGen is the most frustrating tool I've ever used in my entire life. And I'm not saying that to just rant. I'm saying that because this is gonna happen to you as well. You're gonna experience all the same issues as I am experiencing. There are two main reasons why it's frustrating to work with. The first one is that it's just really buggy. Unfortunately, there are just a ton of bugs in in XGen and you're gonna experience them all the time. The second one is that the UX is a bit clunky. The pure user experience might not make a lot of sense. It's um, it's a plugin that is integrated into Maya, but it's not like a fully integrated plugin. You, you're you using some old Maya tools like the 3D paint tool and then you're using some cutting edge XGen tools and combined, it's just a bit messy. So there are some quirks and we'll of course cover these in this series. Another warning as well is that for the love of God, do not update XGen or Maya in the project. I'm not talking about upgrading from Maya 2013 to 20. I'm talking about upgrading from like Maya 2020 to Maya 2020.1. I recently did this and this completely destroyed my old projects. Like I actually couldn't open the projects at all in uh, the new version of it. And that was a pure patch fix. So make sure that when you start a project with, with XGen, you do not update it, even if it's a service pack. XGen is extremely picky with its project settings. You really have to make sure that the project is set beforehand, otherwise XGen literally is not going to work. So we do this by going to File, Set Project, go to a new directory, and then you, which you, where you can set your project, then you hit Set, and you're gonna, just gonna be creating a default workspace. Then we will go to File, Project Window, and Accept. And if we go to this directory, you can now see that we have all the folders needed. So that's it for actually setting the project. Now let's actually get started with action. Now we are gonna be keeping this very simple in this tutorial. We're gonna be using a sphere, and we are just using the default one. What's really important before you start with actually assigning stuff to it is that the model has UVs. Obviously, as we're using a generic sphere, it already has these UVs, which is totally fine. But you have to make sure that your model is UV mapped before proceeding from here. We will also save the scene as well. This is really important. And not just from like a you lose your work, but also a lot of stuff in action actually won't work unless the scene is saved. So we're just gonna be hitting Control S, scenes, and we'll just call this uh, XGen01. So now we are actually ready to get started. We will change the workspace from my classic to XGen. Here we have a really nice general workflow for, for XGen. I will also enable the outliner just so I can drag the outliner all the way over here. And then I will also add a tool settings. We can just double click on any tool like so to get this up. And then we'll just dock this over like so as well. You'll be, you'll be doing both of these quite a lot. So now we have the outliner and we have the tool settings. So we can very easily go between these two. We'll also name our uh, model and we call this uh, hair ball underscore geo. And I'm also deleting history on as well. Shift Alt D to delete history. So we have a nice clean model, save your scene. And then we go to the action tab. Now this looks quite different from all the other tabs you have. And here we can create a new description. The only button you have to be concerned about is this one, create new description. When we click it, we can make a new description. 
There are a few things in this menu which, which is actually important. The first one is the description name. The description is the specific part of the groom you're working on. This could be the hair, the eyebrows, peach fuss, etc. So we are going to be naming this hair and we're going to name it underscore description or desk. It's really important that you name stuff in XGen, otherwise it gets very confused. Next up, we have a collection. The collection is the overall project. So that could be orc character or car, you know, if you have a fuzzy car, whatever it might be. So we're going to be calling this XGen tutorial and underscore call. The reason we are adding underscore call is not just to be fancy, it's also so that it's not going to conflict with anything else. So if we have underscore desk, we know if we have a shader just called hair, we, we know that there, there's not going to be any conflict between the two. Next up, we have what kind of primitives do you want to, to use? Or how do you want to control it? So we are using splines, which is just curves. This is really good for anything where you need really fine control, like if you're doing long hair. Next up, how do you want to generate the primitives? And we want to scatter them randomly across the surface. And how do you want to control them? We want to place them and by placing and shaping guides. This just means that we can now actually use guides to control it. So the important ones are name the description, name the collection, and change the bottom one to placing and shaping guides. Then we hit create. Now you can see on the left, we have an XGen tutorial nurse call. That's what we name our collection. If we open this one up, we have the hair description. And then we have, uh, this is where the, the guides are going to be. So if we now create some guides, we're going to see them popping up under here. We create guides by clicking on the plus icon, the little the guide icon with a plus, or we can do it from the shelf. If we switch this to action, we can do it from the shelf and click on this guy as well. I prefer to do everything within the action shelf itself. So we can click on this and now we can click on the model. And now you can see we have created a guide. So we click another one. Now we can also create another guide and another one. If you want to move these guides, you can hold and control and middle mouse button and you can just drag them around like so. If we want to see the actual groom now, we click on the eye. You need a certain amount of actual guides in order to see the groom, so just add a few guides. And if we were to add more guides, you can now see that we get more of the, we get more groom covering the overall surface. So we can just add a few of these just to get some, some general coverage. What you're seeing though is that these guides are not actually perpendicular to the surface. Some of these are, some of these are, and some of these aren't. You see like these. So what's going on here is that the they're they're being placed based on the interpolation of the other guides. So if you have one which is like which is like this, and then one which is like this, the one in the middle is also going to be like that. It's going to interpolate between the surrounding guides. It's not going to interpolate between these two exactly, but it's something like, but it's going to interpolate between the guides around it. Now, if we go under the outliner, you can see all the guides. If you want to delete a guide, you can easily do that. You can just select it and we can hit delete, or you can delete it from the outliner itself. If you want to delete all of them, we can easily do that as well. And we'll just do that real quick. And we can start with cleaner guides. So I'm just going to be a bit more methodical about, about it this time. There are two parts involved in making really good grooms. The first part is having really good guides, meaning that you place these guides correctly and you were to shape them into something which looks nice. And the second part is using modifiers. So the better your guides are, the easier it is to use modifiers on top of it as well. And we'll cover that in a bit. But for now, let's just add a few guides. You want to use as few guides as possible, at least in the beginning, because it's a lot easier. It's like when you're sculpting, it's a lot easier to, to get the nice shape if you have if you have just a clean mesh. So we're going to be starting off with very simple guides. If you want to see the hair again, we can just click on the, the icon to see the hair. And then if you want to hide it, you can click on this icon right next to it. If you want to hide the, the guides, you can also do that. You can just click on this icon, which has the little Illuminati eye right next to it. And then we can just click on that. And now you can see the guides are disappearing. This is really useful later on. Like once you've done your guide pass, you really don't need to go in and uh, see the actual guides. 
The only thing this is doing, it's just hiding them from here. So you can also just hide them directly from the outliner. So let's add a few more guides. And then we can start to shape them a little bit. Now we're not gonna do anything fancy in this tutorial at all. This is to show you how it works, but I'll show you the general workflow. So if you want some of them to be longer, the easiest way of doing that is to simply just select it and then just scale them up. If we want them to be shorter, we can also scale them down. And if you want to, them to have a specific rotation, we can also do that as well. We can select it, use the rotate tool, and then we can just rotate them to the direction we want. So let's say we want this to be maybe like a, like a hipster ponytail or something like that. We can, we can do that. We can just start to, as a preliminary pass, we can just start to rotate them and scale them into the, the general shape we want. So something like that. Now, if you want to deselect something, the quickest way of doing that is simply to hit the key Alt and D. Alt and D just deselects everything you have selected, and that becomes very important when we're dealing with grooming. Now we can really sculpt the guides using the Sculpt Guides tool. We find this up here in the interface, and it's called Sculpt Guides. Now, there is a little annoying thing when it comes to this. There is the guy right next to it. That is convert primitives to polygons, which means that you're going to converting everything to polygons, meaning your groom is pretty much destroyed, and they're right next to each other. So utter destruction and most useful tool ever. So what we'll do is we'll take this guy and we'll just hold on the middle mouse button and we'll just drag him as far away as possible so that we are not accidentally going to click on it. Now we can click on the Sculpt Guides tool. And now you can see that we can actually start to, start to sculpt them. And this is really useful. It's a, it's a really good tool and allows you to really quickly sculpt the shapes you want. Now, the reason I talked about the old D trick before where you can deselect everything is because if you have one selector like this, you can only actually work on this one, which is really useful in some cases, but a lot of times you're also like, okay, cool, now let me select all of them. And what you might want to do is select all of them like so in the outliner, but this is just messy. So a better way is to have nothing selected. So if we Alt D now, now you can see that we can go back and we can actually start to, uh, to work with this. Let's save our scene. Remember, X-Gen being X-Gen. So maybe we can try to do some kind of cool spiraling or something where it just spirals in. So now we can preview the, the groom by clicking the eye icon, and then we can just hide the guides for now. And you can see it not, looks nothing like what we want. So let's start to cover some of the attributes we have. The first one is the density. This is set to one, which is ridiculously low. If you want to actually have coverage, we have to just set this a lot higher. You can see that this goes to max 100, which in most cases really isn't enough. So we can just input whatever number we want. If we set this to 1,000, you can see that the 1,000 becomes the highest number. So the number we input will just become the highest number, and we can just slide between it. If you want to set this to a million, you know, go ahead. A little tip as well is to, in the interface, click on this icon here. That is going to allow you to have an anti-alias viewport, and you can just see how much cleaner everything becomes. I'm not sure if you can see it due to the compression, but it just becomes a lot nicer to actually look at. Then we go down just a little bit under uh, primitive attributes. Here we have the modifier CV count. This is this has nothing to do with how many CVs each spline is made out of. This becomes very important later on when we deal with modifier. Like keep in mind, notice the name modifier CV count. So this is influenced by the modifiers. Next we have the length. You really don't want to start messing with this. This should be always set to one unless there is some very specific scenario. And if you want to make the groom longer or shorter, you should scale up the guides instead. So take all these guys and scale them up and down like so to make the guides, to make the groom longer or shorter. Width though, we do have to change. This is set to quite a high number. So we're going to have to change this to something a lot lower. So something like 0 0.05 is usually a good number. That's really, really, really a small number. But we're just going to be increasing a little bit for now, just so we can look at the next settings. That is looking at the tapering. Right now you can see that the, 
the hair strands have a completely uniform length, which is not how hair works. So we need to start adding some taper. And now you can see that this goes from the root and gets thinner and thinner and thinner as we get towards the tip. We can also do the taper start, which just determines where, where does it actually start. Does it start at the root or does it start later on? So a number like 0 0.8 and 0 0.8 is usually a good starting point, but this just depends a little bit on your, on your groom. If we want to control the amount of segments per guide and not just based on the modifiers, if we need actual more control, we can do this by selecting one of the guides. You see here if we right mouse button on it, control guide points, we see we have four points. And this means we can get a certain amount of control, but we really can't get a whole amount of control. Like if you're doing something like a really long hair or something like that, you just need more control than that. So then we can select this one and we can go down to the bottom and guide tools and we can hit rebuild. And then we can set this instead of five, we can set this to 10. And now you can see if we go into guide points, now you see we have 10 points, which just gives you a lot more freedom. And this of course works with uh, the sculpt guide tools as well. So now we can just really just go in and make this guy really be controlled, like whatever we want to. So four or five points like with the default is pretty low. So you generally want more than that as well. A little tip as well, which I forgot to mention regarding the sculpt guides tool is that you can change the brush size by holding down the shift key and just dragging up and down or using the B key as well. You can also go on our tool settings and here you can change it as well. Sometimes it's set to like a stupidly high or low value and then you're just gonna keep on scrolling forever. So then you can just manually go in here and set this to a value of something like 50 or you know whatever you see in scale allows for. Now I'm just gonna be adding a few more guides to this. So I'm just gonna be adding them around the model like so. Just on the bottom. And then we can preview it as well. And this is just to show you that there are guides, there's hair everywhere. Now, if we want to create a density mask for this, we can easily do that. That's how we actually control where the groom is gonna be and where it's not going to be. Currently, it's just gonna be everywhere because we haven't really defined where it's gonna be. So we can go to the density and then right below it, we have mask. If we click on this nice little friendly triangle, we can go create map. And now we can see that we have a map name and this is where we just need to name this. We need to just call this density or, you know, whatever, uh, you know, just so it, just so you know what it is. And then we can call this mask. This is where X can gets a bit quirky because now we're dealing with map resolution and you're seeing the number five and you don't really understand what's going on because what is a map resolution of five? You know, is this due to texture resolution, which you normally use to like a 1K map? Well, this is where we're getting into PTEX. We are now looking at the PTEX resolution of five, which is a pretty low resolution. So if you want to, if you really need control, you can set this all the way up to something else. But for what we're doing now, five is totally fine. But if you do need very specific control, like exact control, maybe you're placing eyelashes or eyebrows or something like that, and you really need it to be specific, you can set a higher number. We can also set a start color, and here we can change black, white, or gray. And if you know anything about texturing, you, you'll know that if we have a mask which is white, everything is visible. And if we have set to black, nothing is visible. So if we now hit create, nothing is going to, uh, to actually happen. Well, I just did a little painting before the video, but uh, <laughs> never mind that. But default, nothing is gonna happen because it's all painted with white. So what we can do now is we can just start to paint around. You can see that it switched to the 3D paint tool. And if we were to just hit control one for isolate, now we can just see that uh, we can just start to paint. So if you didn't know, Maya actually has a texturing tool. It's very well hidden because it's not very good, but it works for this purpose. So now we can just start to paint like so. Maybe in the beginning, you want to have a slightly harder fall off. So you might want to switch to this fall off and then you can just really, really make hard edges. Now we're also getting into the one of the weird quirks in Maya, because now we're actually painting directly on the model, meaning we're painting on the UVs, which means that in order for us to save this, you know, in order to use this for future scenes, we have to actually save here first. So go all the way down, then it's safe. So now we just save the texture map. This is an IFF map, you can see it down on the bottom. But if you look at the model now, at the groom, 
nothing's happened and you're wondering why on earth hasn't anything happened, I saved my map, it's because you haven't saved the PTEX. Right now we only saved the, the actual texture map. So we have to transfer this texturing data on into PTEX. And we do that by going under this little save icon here as well. And now you can see that we are saving. And if you have these kind of this kind of issue, that's probably because you haven't painted it, the map perfectly. So we can just go in and we can just paint this, just the remaining areas, just really just go in and just paint these areas out. And then we can hit save and save. Now you can see these are disappearing. It's one of these that you did probably do an okay job, but it's you're talking that you have some 0 0.1 values or something. It just wasn't full coverage. So save, and then we hit save. And now you can see that we get this map, which determines exactly where the groom is, regardless of where the guides are. So this is really, really useful. You will be doing using this pretty much for every single groom you're doing. So it's very important that you get this right. If you want to get more groom in certain areas, you just change this color to white, or you hold on the control key, which does the opposite. So if you hold on control, now you can just see that we can paint in here as well. Then save, and then save. Now you can see we get this nice little pocket of chrome. And then we just keep painting. And then we save, and we save. Technically, you don't have to keep saving and saving all the time, because uh, you you do save this to PTEX. But it's if you want to keep editing the map later on, and particularly before you close down a scene, you do have to save. So it's just a good habit to get into, save, and then save. Somebody can probably make a script which does that as well for you. Now let's look into region maps as well. If we just disable the groom for a second. Now let's say we want to have like a parting map. Let's say we want one side of the hair to go one way and one side to go the other way. Let's just do that real quick. If you want really fine control, I recommend that you set the brush size really low. Just hold on the B key or the shift key. I prefer B, that's just the general Maya hotkey. So that's just ingrained in me, but you know, whatever you prefer. We can also just add another guide. Don't be afraid of adding guides to it. This is not a problem at all. But you can see that they are interpolating based on the ones which are there. And the interpolation is purely mathematical, which means it's technically correct though it's not artistically correct. So you, you might get results which actually aren't what you expect, but they are mathematically correct. This is what, what I also mean that Xgen isn't necessarily the most artist friendly tool because there are a lot of these, these quirks where it does what's correct, just not what you expect. Which means, it not, which also gives us a discussion, is that correct or not? but that is for another X-Gen rant video. <laughs> so now we've done a general parting. And now if we were to look at the actual groom, you can see that nothing really happened. <laughs> you can see that we get this weird thing in the middle, but it's not at all parted. So you could of course try to just add a crap ton of guides just to really define that, or we can use a region map. So if we go down, now you can see that we have a region control and region mask. So what we'll do is we'll create a map under region and we do this the same way as before. Click the triangle, create map, and we can call this uh, reach, and we can call this mask. And now instead of having the, the bl uh, black and white, we have red, green, and blue. And we can just set, set this to red, and now nothing is happening. And that is also because we haven't really set the mask to be enabled. So let's just do that. And again, nothing happened. And then we will start to actually paint a region for it. Now, when you're painting this regions map, region maps, it's really important that you're using the hardest fall off you can. You really don't want any interpolation between the two. So go to color, and now use one of the default colors. I prefer green, just to get started with. Don't pick anything fancy, just keep this to a really hard color. And then we can just start to paint where you want to be. We can also just hide the groom, and we can just paint this. And then we can save and save, save our map here as well. And now you can see we actually get the control one. Now you can see it actually parts it really well. So if you want this to go a bit like this, you can just do that. 
and then we just hit save and we hit save. And now you can see we get a really nice controlled region map like this. Another way of doing this would be to make them actual separate descriptions. So you can do hair left and hair right, but this way you're getting really nice control like so. As a little tip as well, if you do have error messages or if you do have weird things happening in Xgen, open up the script editor and then you search for like you, uh, you control C and you just go to Google and you just search for these. Like I said, there are probably going to be more weird error messages and weird issues in Xgen than any other software. So if you do have weird issues, I've already had issues throughout this video, which I had to just, uh, I just had to restart Maya. If that happens, restart Maya, delete your preferences, which you can do by going to documents, Maya 2020 and preferences and just nuke this entire folder and restart Maya again. So now we have created this insanely beautiful room, which is very versatile. We will look into modifiers as well. Modifiers live under modifiers. And the first one we are gonna be looking into is the clumping. We can add a modifier by clicking on the plus icon and then clumping. And now you get this nice little friendly error message being like, hey, no clump guides found. And my response to that is XGen, relax. We haven't added any clump guides yet. Again, more UX weirdness because it's, it's giving us an error message, but we haven't had time to fix what it's complaining about. So you will see this every single time you're trying to add a clumping modifier. So the way we actually work with clumping modifiers is we go to set up maps on the bottom. And now we get up this menu saying create clump maps. And if we just hit generate right now, you can see that we get very few amount of clumping guides. So you see these yellow lines, these are clumping guides, which means that all the hair is gonna clump to them. So let's see what happens if we hit save now. And you see we get all, like only a few clumps. This is also the time where we need to disable the actual guides because now they are just really annoying. So now you can see we only get a few guides. Set up maps again. And this is not the amount of guides we're getting. This is um, based on the density. So it's not like you set this to 10 and then we get 10 guides. No, this is just a general density amount. If you want them to be at the exact same spot as the guides though, you can hit guide. And now they will be spot placed at the exact same spot at, as your actual guides. So this is really handy if you have some kind of stylized character and you really want to control where the guides are or the clumps are. So you can just keep going back and forth between the set of maps. This is not like a permanent thing. You can always just keep re-adding them. So let's try with a number, something like 20. And then we can hit save. And now you can see we get these nice clumps. Clumping is really the foundation for your modifiers. All hair clumps all the time. When you start actually observing the hair, observing real life reference, you're gonna see clumping everywhere. So now you can also start playing with the settings as well. So you can just start to play with the root like so, and you can play with the tip like so as well. So if you want to clump less, you can just set this the tip area to be a lot less sharp. It says R for root and T for tip. So this is really useful if you just want to almost, almost go into like a point at the end. But generally this is a pretty good way of working. We can also go under noise effects and we can set a noise. So if we set this to one and we actually enable some noise in the curve, now you can see we get some noise going on. And this is where we are starting to have to worry about if we go into primitives, scroll all the way up and modify our CV count. So if this is set to five, it's not gonna do a whole lot, but we set this to 20 and we go back to the modifier and we were to change the noise frequency. Now you can start to see that this matters a lot. So if we go back to the primitives and we change the amount from 20 now to five, you can see that this looks completely different. So you need a certain amount of of resolution in your in your actual CV count. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So if you set this even higher again, you get the, it just becomes more accurate. So, you know, the higher you go, the more accurate you become. So, but 20 generally okay for us right now. We'll go back to modifiers and then you can change this up and down like so. You can also change the noise frequency to something like two. A lower amount means less breakup. Higher amount means more breakup. So you can just see the difference between the clumping and without clumping. 
then we can add another clumping. You'll often have multiple layers of clumping. So we add another one and we go to clumping. And now again, boom, we have another red error message, which again, I said, don't worry about it. Don't Google this error message. Set up maps. And now we can set this to something like 30. And we can generate and we can save. And now you can see that our clumps are now broken up by smaller clumps. This is actually a bit easier to see if we change the amount of density and the width of the hairs. So we just can reset uh, the width to something like 0 0.5. So now it's we're a lot lower. And we can even set the density up to something like 2000. Don't be afraid of too high numbers. If uh, if it goes too high, you know, if you said like a million, that's going to be insane. But something like a thousand, ten thousand is totally fine. So let's go back to our modifiers. And then we go to setup map. And we can set this even higher as well. We can set this to 50. We hit save. Generate. And then we hit save. And now you can see we get even more breakup. And you can just keep going back to this. You don't have to. It, this is not a linear process. It's not that you do your clumping and then it layers and you can never go back. If you want to change the amount of initial clumps, we can also do that. We go to clumping. Set our maps. And we can set this maybe to 30. And we're going to have a lot more clumps. And now you can see this also changes as well. So this way is a really good way of actually creating a lot of interest within your hair. And this is why I said it's a two part process, because first you have to get good guides. Obviously we didn't, and we just did something weird, but you really should spend a lot of time just getting good guides. And then you use modifiers to break it up. So you can see from this to this, and then even more broken up like so as well. And you can even do a third layer of this. There's no stopping you there, just go crazy. Set this to a hundred, a thousand. Just go crazy and have fun and do something which looks nice. And it's just a nice way of breaking it up a bit more. And then on top of this, we can add a noise modifier. So we go to add a modifier and then we add noise. And now you can see this breaks it up quite a lot. Now this breaks it up too much for me. So we can set the mask to be something like 0.1. And now you can see it's just going to break it up a little. 0 0.5. It's going to break it up more again. And we can set this all the way to 1. Just to go back to where it was. Now this kills most of your clumping. Though there, you can still see it underneath. But you really want to change like the magnitude scale. Like how, how much does it actually do when it comes to the noise. And this again is root and tip. Not a whole lot is going to happen at the root. Not a lot is going to happen at the tip. You can also change the frequency as well. You can set this to 10, and that gives you like this crazy hair. Or you can set this to 1, and that gives you less noise. But it's a really good idea to break up the noise, just to, to break it up just a little bit like so. Because otherwise it's just going to it's just gonna look really, uh, it's just going to look really uh, uniform and not very interesting at all. And of course you can keep disabling and enabling these clumps as well. So you can just really get this nice breakup. Sometimes you don't necessarily need a whole lot of clumping going on. And you can just get this really nice broken up result like this, just with a noise. We can also change the magnitude amount as well, just so it's a bit less in general. So just we have a little bit of noise just to break it up. One thing as well I forgot to mention is if we go under clumping, you can also set color preview. So now you can see where each clump actually is which makes it very easy to actually work with this because now you can clearly see where each clump is and how many you have of them. And you can see how they're being further broken up like so. And once you're done with the clump, you just disable the color preview like so. And that is really the core of how to use XGen in order to create grooms. Based on this, you can create really most things. Of course, there is more complexity. There is a lot more complexity than the modifiers, and you can have a whole series on each one of them. But this is really the essence of that. Next up, we will look into how we can actually render this out using Arnold. The first thing we have to do is just set up a very quick render environment. We're going to go to uh, Arnold, Lights, and Area Light, and we're just going to make a really quick light like so, make it go a little bit from top like so. And then we'll go to the attribute editor and we're just gonna set an exposure to something like five. And this is pretty much ready for us to render at this point in terms of lighting. You know, we're not gonna keep this very simple. Then next up, let's go into the Arnold render view and let's see what happens. 
that would render from a perspective. And in this case, you're like, sweet, it renders. And then you start to compare it and you're like, wait a minute, this isn't actually the same room. We, we render from the same camera and the party map is the same place, but where's this guy and <laughs> what's going on here? And what on earth is going on here? So what's happening is that Arnold isn't speaking properly with XGen. So we have to set up a few things first. So let's just close down the render view. And then we have to go under XGen, preview and output. And then we have to go to renderer and set this to Arnold. Now, if you have another renderer like V-Ray, you just set that here. Then we go to file and we do export patches for batch render. And then we just hit export. And then we can try it again. And then what we do is we go to render and we do update full scene. And sometimes you just have to nudge it around a little bit. This is a bit buggy, I find, to be honest, where you just have to go in and do this a few times. But the steps are change the renderer to Arnold render, go to file, export patches for batch render, and then go to render and update full scene. And if that doesn't work, restart, restart Maya and try to play with some other settings like the render percentage and just try to try to force it to refresh the, the actual render. But now you can see this looks exactly the same as what we have in the um, in the viewport. But we have a problem that is it still looks kind of crap. The, the shader looks <laughs> looks pretty good in terms of the viewport and it looks okay here, but it's not a particularly good shader. So what we'll do is we'll assign an actual Arnold shader to this, which we can do by going to our description, select the actual description, and then we assign a shader to this. The important thing is to assign a shader to the actual description and not to anything else. Right mouse button, assign new material, Arnold, and then we go to AI standard hair. And now you can see it turns all the way black and we have the AI standard hair. The hair color is controlled through the melanin slider. So if this is set to one, you get black hair. If this is set to zero, you get white hair. And you can see that if we do anything in between, we get different hair colors. You get blonde and you get something more red or or um, or brown to just something a lot darker and it just goes darker and darker. So it's really easy to get very nice appealing hair using this shader. Simply just change the melanin levels up and down and you're almost there just to get started. You can also change the roughness amount to get less or more shiny hair as well. So let's just make this blonde. And there are charts on this as well. You can find online like what hair color does have what melanin levels as well. So when it comes to rendering this, we're not going to go too deep, in, deep into this, but one of the reasons why you have a lot of noise is because you need a lot of specular samples because hair is very specky. So make sure to increase the amount of spec samples to get nice and shiny hair. So now you can see with changing the specular samples to five instead of two, we get much, a much, much cleaner result. Though, of course, it also takes a lot longer to render. So that is the end of this X-Gen tutorial. If you are interested in learning more about Maya, we highly recommend that you check out our introduction to Maya series, where we do go through everything about creating this helmet from scratch, from really clean modeling like this to going through Arnold render settings like we just covered a little, little bit now with the specular samples, to lighting this, to shading all the different things, to retopologizing, to actually going a bit more into XGen as well. So thank you so much for watching. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure to like, comment and subscribe and let us know if you have any cool action tips for us.